Hello mga kawamat, in this video lesson, we will discuss the scope and the limitation of study. So this presents the coverage of the research in terms of location, time, respondents, and etc. So and the potential weaknesses or problems with the study identified by the researcher. So in writing this section, we focus on the site data collection, identify the school involved, number of classes, their grade year level, number of participants, or respondents, or subjects, and topics of lessons covered if applicable. State inadequate measures of variables, loss or lack of participants, small sample sizes, errors in measurement, and other factors typically related to data collection and analysis. So what are the boundaries that perhaps the design of your study may not allow? So the scope and limitation are very important to the nature of your study. As your study begins with your problem statement and purpose statement outlining the reason and direction of your study, your study must also indicate its limitations. So in addition to what your study intends to accomplish or a discussion of what your study intends not to accomplish is of course the importance and value as well. So number one, what are the boundaries that perhaps the design of your study may include? First, a brief statement of, uh, of the general purpose of the study. Next, the subject matter and topic studied and discussed. The locale of the study where the data were gathered or entity to which the data belong. Next, the population from which the respondents were selected. So this must be large enough to make generalization significant. Another is sampling. So is your sampling a non-probability or purposeful sampling? For example, uh, it was not cost-effective to survey all members of the organization or it was not time-efficient to survey all members of the organization. A limitation in the scope and validity of your survey instrument. Limitation to your choice of methodology. So as a result of this limitation, great care was taken with the ability to generalize the resultant findings when discussed. And last, the period of the study, which is the time either months or years during which the data were gathered. So limitation are those elements that may limit what can you say about the results. There are what elements will affect the ability for your study to generalize the, result, the results. Limitations occur in all types of research and area. For the most part, outside the researchers control given practical constraints such as time, funding, and access to population of interest. They are threats to the study, internal or external validity. Limitation can get in the way of you, of your being able to answer certain questions or draw certain types of inferences from your findings. Therefore, it's important to acknowledge them up front and make note of this restrict the conclusion you'll be able to draw from your study. Frequently, Limitation can get in the way of our ability to generalize our findings to the larger population or to draw causal conclusion. So be sure to consider these issues when you are thinking about potential limitation of your study. In quantitative research, common limitation include the following. Number one, participant dropout. Number two, Small sample size or low power. Number three, non-representative sample. Number four, violation of statistical assumptions. Number five, non-experimental design. Lack of manipulation of variables. 
and lack of controls. Number six, potential confounding variables. The limitation we contrast are those characteristics and details about your study. So we have the different uh, common example of the limitation. But before that, so we're going to discuss this. So the limitation by contrast are those characteristics and details about your study that may limit the scope or your define your specific boundaries of your particular study. So they are the definitions you set as the boundaries of your research study. So when you say the limitation are in your control. No? So the limitations are set so that your goals do not become impossibly large to complete. For example, uh, kasama dyan yung objectives, no? yung research questions, variables, theoretical objectives that you have adopted. And also the population chosen as target of your, span, uh, of your study or your respondents. So when you are stating your delimitation, clearly informs readers why you choose this course of study. So the answer might simply but you were curious about the topic or wanted to improve standards of professional field by revealing certain findings. Uh, the limitation also are often strongly related to your theory and research questions. Remember that the limitation are not good or bad. They are simply a detailed description of the scope of interest for your study as it relates to the research design. So the common example of the limitations, so we have two most common sources. Then that is inclusion, exclusion of criteria, or how you define your population of interest. Research questions or problems you have chosen to examine. So we have several other common sources of the limitation. It includes the following. First, theoretical framework or perspective adopted. Number two, methodological frameworks or paradigm chosen. And number three, the variables you have to send to measure or manipulate. So, to guide, so, meron tayong sample, no? may mga sample tayo na pwede nyong gamitin. So, uh, for example, the title is A Descriptive Study on the Amount of Sleep and Long-Term Memory Among Grade 12 STEM Students. So, uh, tingnan nyo na lang yung kung paano nila ginawa yung scope and delimitation nila. Okay, so dyan nakalagay yung, ayan, the study will only focus on the criteria given by the researchers. So nakalagay kung uh, sino yung respondents, ilan yung respondents, at uh, uh, saang area. Okay, nakalagay dyan kung anong school involved at anong strand. Another example, so factors influencing Gas students' decisions after graduating a senior in senior high school. Okay, so nakalagay na limited for 200 students. And then yung strand is gas. So the school, University of the East. Okay, so ilalagay niyan. yan. Another example, okay, the effectiveness of styrofoam as new and alternative adhesive. So dito, wala silang gagamit yung respondents, no? So, ano lang mga nilagay nila? So, yung mga kakailanganin. So, the study only involves the use of styrofoam waste and gasoline as smelting solvent. So, nilagay nila yung mga kakailanganin nilang gawin. So, wala, walang respondents involved dito kasi it's experimental eh. Okay? So, pwede nyo yung gawing guide. No? Itong mga present kong example. And, to guide you, so the scope identify, so isummarize natin yung uh, diniscuss ko kanina. So the scope the identifies the boundaries, yun yung tatandaan natin, of the study in terms of subject. Okay? Objectives, facilities, area, time frame. Okay? Pag sinabi natin time frame, halimbawa, uh, anong sakop lang ba yung research mo? Pang first quarter lang ba? pang first semester or buong school year 
and the issues to which the research is focused. So, pwede tayo mag-start ng ganito na. The coverage of this study, the study consists of, the study is focused on. So, yan ang mga pwede nating uh, starting uh, para uh, starting sentence natin yan. No? Ito ang pwede natin gamitin. The delimitation of the study is delimiting a study of geographic location, age, so magkaiba talaga sila, sex, population traits, population size, or other similar consideration. It is also identifying the constraints or weaknesses of your study which are not within the control of the researcher. So for example, the study does not cover the Okay, so pwede natin gaw, uh, magiging guide okay, sa paggawa ng scope and delimitation of the study. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button para updated kayo for more video tutorial. This is your guide in learning your math lesson, your WOW Math channel.